for the song and then we're going to start. I'm going to step off and then we're going to start. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I need some happy people to, to give God praise right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this day because we could have been dead and gone, sleeping in our graves, but you gave us life. You gave us life over death today. We thank you for you are the conquering Savior. And we come to worship you on this good day. On this good Friday, because you alone are worthy. You alone are worthy. In spite of all my hiccups, uh, in spite of all my setbacks, uh, in spite of my back being up against the wall, in spite of my worry, in spite of my mind being discombobulated, I, I will bless the Lord at all times. Uh, his praises still continually be in my mouth. And God, we thank you. God, we pray for the sick and set in on today. I pray that, Lord, that you would touch the bereaved family right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, I particularly ask that, God, that you would touch the Gaston family. God, that you would touch them right now. That you would go right to their home over in Texas, God, and just touch them right now, God. Just Comfort them right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We lift them up to you today, God, that you may have your way in their lives. Send your angels, God, to build a fence around them. I'm asking, God, a special request that you would just meet their needs right now, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, that up on Sunday, I'm asking that God that you will go down to North Carolina. Oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, saints, bless the Lord. Oh, Sunday, I'm asking that you will go down there, God, and just touch right now. Oh, God, head up, oh, she. Touch my God, sister. Touch her right now from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, God. God, I believe you to be a healer and a deliverer right now, God. I'm asking that, God, that you would meet her right there in that hospital room. And that, God, did up on Sunday, that you would remove every clot in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would break free every vessel right now in the mighty name of Jesus, that your will may be done and fulfilled in her life, God. Send your angels to comfort. Send your angels to comfort right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. As I lift her and her mother up right now, Miss Lawrence, oh God. I'm asking that God that you would touch. Throw your weight around in Texas. Throw your weight around in North Carolina. Throw your weight around in Indiana. Throw your weight around in Illinois. Throw your weight around in Arkansas. Throw your weight around, oh God. In Tennessee, throw your weight around today, God. For you are the giver of life, the sustainer. That is who you are, God. And I give you praise today on this Good Friday. Oh, I got a reason to bless your name, God. I got a reason to lift you up, God. I have a reason to lift you up, huh? Because today my brother is saved because of what you did today. Because of you, my sister is delivered. Because of what you did today. Because of you, God. Somebody got a second chance. Somebody got a second chance of healing today. And we bless you in Jesus' name. Let the church say, Amen. And Lord, we thank you for your healing for Deacon Cannon. We thank you for your many blessings for Deacon Davis. We pray, God, for the strength of Deacon Eugene, that, God, that you're going to have your way right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Continue to touch my mother. Continue, continue, continue to touch my mother, God. 
in the mighty touch of my grandmother. Oh, God. Throw your weight around today, God. Mm. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Come on, Pastor Tala, if you would just give us a selection. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to um, sing a little bit of Mary, Did You Know? Hallelujah. <clears throat> Mary, did you know that your baby boy will one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy will save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new? This child that you deliver will soon deliver you. And Mary, did you know that your baby boy will give sight to a blind man? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would calm a storm with his hands? Did you know that your baby boy he walk where angel trod when you kiss your little baby you kiss the face of god oh mary did you know oh mary did you know The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will walk, the dumb will speak, the praises of your name. Oh, Mary, did you know? Your baby boy is Lord of all creations. Did you know that your baby boy will one day rule the nations? Did you know that your baby boy is heaven's perfect? The sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Oh, Mary, did you know? Did you know? Open up your mouth and give God praise. 
If you got hands, if you got a mouth, if you got air, come on, just focus on him today. Focus on him today. Focus on him today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today we bring to you the seven last words of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I must say that um, God is going to do something great in this season between now and Resurrection Sunday. I know a lot of us, we emphasize and we, we uh, characterize that day as Easter Sunday. Um, but I, I, I characterize it as Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Because he got up on that day. Hallelujah. As I read one of the words, as I'm starting off, I'm going to be reading from St. Matthew's 27 and 46, that verse right there. Amen. And I'm believing God to really do something supernatural in this place today. Somebody say super natural hallelujah Matthew 27 and 46 I'll be reading from and different 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 ways uh, is characterized and placed in different orders uh, in different uh, situations but God is about to do something great. Amen. I want to say God bless you. God bless you, Deacon Cannon. I, I'm glad to see you in here. You said you was going to come, and I know it takes a lot of energy for you to get here, but you're here right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Could he hear us back there? Amen. I see you holding that. That's, that's something else. That's something. Oh, he just watching it too. That's the Bible. Okay, he's, he, he, wanted, he wanted the Bible. Okay, amen, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 27 and 46. And I'm going to use my, my, my confidant, Pastor Charles, if he will read that uh, 23 and 46, amen. 20, yep, Matthew chapter 27 and verse 46. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, labama da samani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And the word of God is blessed. You may take your seat. These last four words were ordered shortly before his death. This is the only passage where the original Aramaic language is preserved. Here Jesus was expressing his feeling and his abandonment by praying in, opening, in the opening verse of Psalms 22. God placed the sins of the entire world. Anybody just couldn't do that. You had to be chosen. You had to be chosen and, 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 and to carry that much weight and to know that there, there are going to be stubborn people that's going to mess up again, but he carried so much weight. He carried so much weight to the point where it's, it, 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 to us, it would have been impossible for us to carry. It would have been impossible for us to endure. It would have been impossible for us to, to walk down the road, being spit on and talked about, beaten and tried, lied on and talked about, ostracized and feeling abandoned. I believe it wasn't so much as now that he's feeling the emotions of a real person, a, whole, a real person to the point where he's feeling all of, all of the emotions are now on him. 
He feel what we are, we have always felt. He had to feel this way before he can go to that cross. He had to know the pain. He had to know the struggle. He had to know the cost of all of what we have been through. He had to know. But the biggest thing here that we got to understand one thing right here. Nobody likes abandonment. Nobody likes abandonment. He's here and he's saying, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Look, the Bible says he said this with a what? A loud voice. A loud voice. A loud voice. So, so it, it, to, to, to me, that, that emphasizes the fact that while he was up there on that cross, crying out in all this pain, he felt his father has now turned his back on him. The situation has now changed. That he now feels the weight of every person we can't even we can't even we can't even imagine how it could feel to be nailed to a cross hand and foot to have to wear a crown a, a crown as thorns and to feel the pressure of the thorns constantly pressing into the score the minds of people we got to understand our minds are so messed up today that we still, we're still trying to understand what God went through, what Jesus has went through on that cross. But what he did, he put on that crown so that you, you won't have to wear that crown. He put on that crown of thorns so that you won't have to wear that crown of thorns. He took on the nails so that you wouldn't have to take on those nails. So he quotes Psalms 22. He quotes Psalms 22 and, and we wonder why would he use that particular text to begin the quote. That particular text. We got to understand that when David experienced those things, we got to understand that Jesus was there. We got to understand that he wasn't just here and started being here in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We got to understand that he was there in Genesis. We got to understand that he was there all the way up into the last Old Testament book. He was there in the book of Exodus. He was there when they walked around the walls of Jericho. He was there when King Jehoshaphat, hallelujah, had to tell the people to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. He was there. But through all of that in those generations, he had to get up on an old rugged cross. With a crown made out of thorns. A cross that was used repeatedly. Somebody say, but God. And he says, Lord, my God, my God, will have that forsaken me. I want to read one more thing and I'm going to tag somebody else in. Even though Jesus experienced the fullness of human emotions. He also knew the scriptures. And God the Father planned for salvation. Thus Jesus chose to pray a psalm that begins with discouragement and ends with joyful hope. I want to let somebody know that when he cried out, it made it sound like discouragement at first, but it was to give you hope. Somebody say hope lives today. 
Come on, give God praise. Come on, let's come continue giving God some praise. You know, I am so honored to be before you. Thank you, Pastor Cornell. Thank you, Redeemed Faith and Family. Today is a very special day that I see something that's very touching. I hear a pastor said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Last Sunday, and out of, for those who are with me this week, I bring you greetings from New Life International Ministries. But, Pastor, I see something a little bit different on this day. Somebody said this day is different. And the reason I said on this day is so different is because the Lord showed me from Sunday. It was a Palm Sunday where when Jesus came into Jerusalem, we found that they laid out palm leaves. They even had a cloth. They were even saying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Our King, God, and Messiah is here. But what we found, those same people, Brother Anthony was giving him praise, is that the same people for the day he ended, they turned their back on him. Well, I want to share something with you all today. From last Sunday till this day is five, right? Come on now, get with me. From Sunday to Friday is the number five. Number five means grace. But we found out on this day was the day that our Lord gave up his life for us. And the day is April what? The 7th. On this day, I said it's special to me because on this day we found out that the Lord completed what he had to do for you, you and I sin. But what really touched me on this day, when he was up on the cross, we found that our Lord and Savior Jesus, he said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Luke 23, 34. I love when Pastor was sharing with us when he was saying that how they treated him. They beat him. They even took a crown of thorns that they put up on their head. They even tore his clothing. They wanted to make a mockery out of our Savior. But see, the sad thing is what they were doing, that's why I love when he said, Father, for they know not what they are doing. And I said, well, Father, explain that a little bit more to me. He said, anytime when those who are trying to make a mockery out of me is only showing who I truly am to you. See, only person that can wear a crown is who? Is a king. Come on now and see what they thought they were doing, making mockery out of this king. They was only making a mockery out of themselves. Well, what I found when I was looking at it, and I said, well, God, why would you say that we forsaken you? He said, well, let's start back with Sunday when I came into Jerusalem, when they was making a mockery out of me. I knew what I had to fulfill. I knew that things was going to happen before I even get there Friday. Because if you remember when he came in, they said on the donkey, he weeped because he knew the pressure that he would have to do and deal with in five days to bring grace to you all and myself is that he witnessed what they were doing to him. Even when he was on the cross, we find that Jesus Christ, he looked down in anguish. He was so hurt because he was witnessing those who arrest him was under order by a king and the ones that portrayed him was supposed to be the Pharisees, men and women of Christ. These are the ones that turned their back on him. But the Roman soldiers, we find that what was happening to Jesus, why he was so hurt, he saw the Roman soldiers on their knees They was gambling for his clothes. We see the criminals that was on seats each side of him was, 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 was talking about what was happening at that particular moment. Even the religious leaders mocked Jesus Christ. And the crown that they put on their head, they was looking at it to bring blasphemy, but they still know what they were doing. 
surrounded by the most unworthy people, Jesus said unto them, Father, I will have to fulfill what I have to do for them. You got to understand this because Jesus is saying today, on this day, there's a lot of people that claim that they love me, but they still blaspheme me and they turn their back on me. There's a lot of people said on Good Friday. See, you got to understand the significance of what this Holy Week on this particular day. I don't know how many of you all can go back and understand or look at it that this day, like I said, from Friday, from last Sunday to this day, is five days. That's grace. But he said for you all for to understand why I said that you all forsaken me, I already knew what you was going to do before you did it. He said, I have to fulfill my prophecy that what was spoke about me in the Old Testament. From the cross, Jesus interceded for our sins, and he's still doing that today. Because if you don't believe me, look what's going on in the world. And he said, I have paid the price for you, all of you, not some of you, but all of you. I paid the price. I gave up my life. And when I did these things, I did it because I want you, you to know how much I love you. And I love when Pastor Cornell, when he said, well, Father, why have you forsaken me? But one other thing that we got to understand when it comes to the word of Jesus Christ, Jesus God is one. So at this moment when he was on the cross, he's only talking to himself. Because we are still learning when God said you have a problem, you need to go talk to yourself. And when I saw this here, I said, God, you mean you gave your life for me? The book of Isaiah uh, 53 and 12, it says, Therefore I will divide him a portion with many, and he shall divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his soul to death. And why numbers with the transgression? Yet he bore the sins of many and made intercessions for the transgression. One more thing I got to say, Jesus' prayers. Father, forgive them was the answer in the lives of many people. The Romans and Cheerians at the foot of the cross upon seeing how Jesus died exclaimed, surely this man has to be son of God. One of the thieves crucified and was there with Jesus and exercised his faith at that moment, God is telling each and every one of us, it's not too late to get back to him. And what we got to do is understand when it comes to Jesus Christ is that we have to take away the things that we want to do and follow what he has already done. Did y'all get that? Take away from what we want to do, but follow what he has already done for us. We still celebrating on this day, this Good Friday. It was over 2,000 years ago that he hung on the cross. But he said, I will live and live forever. He said, my life that I paid and gave unto you, your sins and everything about you has been paid in full. You don't have to worry about the people from downtown coming into your house until you got to move and get into a new residence. It is paid in full. I, I paid it with my life. My sins and your sins of the world. When I said my sins, I'm talking about pastor. Not talking about Jesus Christ because we know he came in this world sinless and took on sin for you and I. The last thing I want to say unto you all, don't let this day be a day that you separate yourself from Christ. We knew, and God knew in the book of Genesis when he gave and created man in his image. He knew that one day, sooner than later, what I created would turn their back on me. But he said, because I love each and one of you all, I will never turn my back on you. Amen. Yeah, let's give God some praise. Amen. Come on, give him praise. Give him praise. Stop being stingy. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I am loving this because 
one thing we got to understand here is that uh, we're, we're speaking the words that have been echoing through generation after generation. Yes, yes, God. And we're talking about the very thing that we celebrate every year has been celebrated and talked about and taught in Sunday schools and Bible studies for generations and this 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 third word that I'm going to speak on today is hallelujah coming from the book of Luke's 23 and 43 hallelujah thank you Jesus Somebody give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you. We bless you. 23 and 43. When you have it, say amen. Thank you, Jesus. In this case right here, Jesus, he's on the cross. And... He's been recognized by one of the men on the cross. And we got to understand here is that he recognized Jesus. He recognized the deity of Jesus. He recognized who he was. He didn't, he didn't, uh, he wasn't like the other man that was all quiet and was just there just to, just to die on the cross. But he recognized his deity. He recognized the fact that he, this man that was right here in the middle of both of us that deserves what we've done, our punishment, done nothing wrong. But what he, what some, he, he tapped into something that a lot of us still trying to tap into. He tapped in the fact that he recognized that this have got to be the son of God. He, 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 I mean, come on, come on, come on. Now, this, this man was in, I, I can almost imagine, just, just think, if this man was in jail as long as Jesus was on his ministry, we don't know. But we know that this man was put on death row and he was to die on that cross. We recognize that. He, he recognized that at, between him and the, the man on the left and the man on the right, between both of them, they didn't have no crown on when I think about the crown that Jesus was wearing is that this was a different kind of crown. When I was sitting there, when I was sitting there just thinking, God said, look, this crown carries weight. It don't just carry thorns. It carries weight. It carries some weight on it. The crown has some weight on it. Because the crown had to be pressed. When, when most kings wear their crown, a crown, a crown is made with such a it's, it's made in such a way that it, it, it has something on the inside that would take the weight. It, it would release some of the weight off whoever's wearing the crown. So when it sits on the, the skull, you won't feel all the weight of it. It can be, it can be as heavy as uh, 20, 30, 40, I don't know. It could be real heavy. But the thing is the crown doesn't feel that heavy because something is stopping the weight from feeling as heavy. It's, it's, it's balanced all the way around. But the crown that Jesus had on was recognized. The thorn, the thorns in the crown that he had was recognized by this man. And listen to what he says. I want to go up and read before I read that, that, that seven last one. I want to read something. It says, verse 41 says, And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. So, here, this is what he's saying. He said, he said, but this man have done nothing wrong, nothing amiss. 
And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou cometh into the kingdom. He said, Lord, remember me. And, 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 and here's the thing right here. That Jesus gives him access before he enters the kingdom. Verse 43 says right here, And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Verily, verily, I say unto you, hallelujah. See, it has to be something that's inside of you that recognizes your guilt of sin and recognize who's wearing your debt. I didn't catch that. Your sin, your debt is on his head. Your debt is in his hand. He's, he's about to pay a debt that nobody was able to pay. Nobody was able to pay. Hallelujah. So, so you find this man, he's, he's getting access to where there was another man. He, there was another man, and we wonder, why did he say nothing? Sometimes we can be so stiff-necked and, 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 and caught up in our own emotions that we won't even say nothing. Hallelujah. Sit, laying there in, in the same situation, but won't say nothing. Hanging on different crosses, but won't say nothing. Recognize that, 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 that this man was justly, unjustly put on a cross. And unjustly, he was. But when he recognized that, he began to talk to Jesus and, you know, he began to say things to him and let him know, say, look, Lord, when you get to heaven, when you get to heaven, remember me. Somebody say, remember me, Lord. Remember me. Remember when you get to heaven, when you get there, don't Forget about me. Remember me. And I love it because I love it because Jesus gave him access to heaven. Now look, look at this. When we read, we read, you know, we 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 emphasize that Jesus didn't go directly to heaven. He went to hell. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so here's the thing right here. So I'm not going to be there before you and I'm not going to put you on the waiting list. So I'm going to give you access right now. Hallelujah. Because I got some unfinished business that I got to leave this world for a little while, just for a few days. You'll meet, you'll beat me there, but I'll be there. I got some unfinished business I got to take care. Somebody give God praise. Somebody say, remember me. Come on, give the Lord praise. Tag, you in. All right. Come on, let's give him some praise. I'm, I'm so caught up into the word. Wow, remember me. Remember me. And doing this here when Jesus was on the cross and he was saying that, like Pastor was saying, that I have some unfinished business to take care of. But before he did those things, I want to show you something in the book of John. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 26 and 27. The book of John, chapter 19, verse 26 and 27. Here where we will find, it says, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to this mother, woman, 
Behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And as from that hour, the disciple took her to his home. Well, there's something very interesting here that how Jesus himself, when he was speaking to this disciple, he was talking about one of his uh, close disciples, one that stood by his side, that stayed with him, one that went to and witness him being on the cross. But it was something very interesting here. It is said as Jesus hung on the Christ, the Bible recorded that he spoke seven final statements. And this is what we're sharing with you all today. The third saying recorded, as I just read to you from the book of John, expressing the Lord's care and concern for his mother. Now, this is very interesting. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he knew that the hour and his time is getting ready to be up. What we find here, so interesting, Pastor Charles, what Jesus is speaking about, he was talking to his disciple, his dear friend, his close, John. Well, why is it so significant that John stayed with him? Why wasn't the other disciples with him? They had been with him through all the miracles and signs and wonders he was doing. But at this particular time, they all turned coat and ran. But this particular man stood by his side. And when he said, woman, see, I don't know about you, but I can't go to my mother. She's in heaven now, but I can't go to mama and call her woman. You don't do that. You don't do that. That's the English version of what we see when we call woman. But what we find here when it comes to Jesus Christ, when he called his mother woman, he wasn't disrespecting her. He was giving her her due. You got to under, understand because back then, a woman was a word of respect. He cherished his mother and he cherished his mother so much despite the anguish, pain, and stuff that he was suffering on this cross. He had to look down and see his mother was going to be left alone. At this time, we must have to figure that her husband Joseph was gone. He had died at that moment. So Jesus is on the cross. He's looking down. Now, who can I make sure that my mama is going to be taken care of? But when he looked over and he saw John there, he said, woman, behold, this will be your son. You can't trust everybody with your loved one. Jesus said, you can't trust everybody today to watch over your loved one. It's an honor to sit here today and be here with you all to look at the mothers, the grandmothers. It's our honor to be a part of you all that's getting on this Good Friday how important you are to Jesus. A typical dying son is looking out and his mother, he felt, would be abandoned. But he said unto himself, John, I got to go now. And where I go, you, you'll be there a little later. But my time has come that I have to fulfill the prophecy of what I have to do. Because if we look at it, when you go back to this, this point where he is looking at his mother, woman, here is a son and son, here will be your mother because now he's still connected to a family. You got to remember when Jesus came in this world, he came here not to serve, to be served, but to serve. He also, when he came, he said that I want a family. I want my own children. I love this here when the scripture talks about, he said that a slave, do not know what a master is doing. 
But I'm not calling you a slave. I call you a friend. That's what Jesus said. I'm going to write about it. Jesus calls us a friend, but our father calls us his children. So at this moment, I got a chance to witness how Jesus became back to from where he came from. He's not looking down at his mother as a friend, but he's speaking at this particular time, Mary, the mother of my son Jesus, is still also my child. I put you in authority to watch over my child. Now, we're living a time today is that we have to understand that the things that's going on in this world is we have to understand what Jesus is saying. I'm giving you the authority right now to watch over my child. Mama, I'm giving you the authority to teach my son. But the thing that I want you both to do is love one another as I love you. Because he said there's going to be a time where they're going to continually turn their back on me. The same one that was saying hallelujah is the same one is witnessing me upon this cross. I love when Pastor shared with us is, is meet me in paradise. But he is so right when he said that crown had to weigh quite a bit. That pain, can you imagine you witnessing your child that being made out of a mockery? Where they, they said they whipped him, beat him, that his skin was torn apart. He was unrecognizable. But he said, I want y'all to know that every time they hit me, it was paying your debt for your sin in full. Woman, this is your son. This is the son that I chose for you. This is the son that I know that will never turn his back on you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. And when you got to understand when Jesus say things to us, he uses each one of us to get his message across. Didn't he say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So I will leave you a comforter. He's only fulfilling what he's already been talking about. I will need, never leave you nor forsake you. Woman, this is your son. He will never leave you. Woman, this will be the comforter to make sure that you need everything that you should ever need. And one thing you got to understand is simply this. Here is your mother that will give you the love that a mother will give her only son. When I say her only son, we know that she had other children, but this particular son was so different. This particular son, she knew that when he come into this world, he came and he will pay a price for us. I love this here, and I'm getting ready to close with this. God, on this day, on this day, let us accept the mother that you have given us. Let us be the son that will protect our mothers. But most of all, Father, let not what you did on this day ever go in vain. On this day, Father, we accept your grace. On this day, we, we thank you for showing us the way. But most of all, your love is better than any love that we can give each other. But your love will sustain us as long as we stay with you and accept what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise. Come on, let's give God praise. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm back up here. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's just give up another praise. I just, I just want to just tell God, thank you. We come to the fifth word. Amen. The fifth word. The, somebody say the fifth word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We'll be reading from John 19 and 28 on today. John 19 and 28. Amen. Hallelujah. I like that when he emphasized, you know, about John, when he talked about John. And I, uh, in my studies upstairs, I have different books and w about what each disciple did and what uh, they represented and how close they were to Jesus Christ. And for the most part, when you reading the Bible, you really ought to hear, hear you hear their names, but not all of them, their names weren't always mentioned. But everybody that was close to Jesus that followed him was mentioned all the time when you and talked about all the time, had something to say and had something to do that was right there by his side. Amen. Hallelujah. They had a job and a purpose to fulfill. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. When you have it, say amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. Going to read this fifth word. I want to make sure that I want to read a little bit more. I have it written down, but I want to make sure that I want to read just a little bit deeper intel in it so that you all can get uh, a deeper understanding about, about what's about to take place. Somebody say it's about to go down. Amen, 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 hallelujah. It's about to go down up in here, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Anybody know what the number five represents? Grace, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Say it again. 19 and 28, amen. Hallelujah. Now, after, now after Jesus tell his mother, behold thou son, and we get to number five, we get to the part where after all this time has passed by, it reads, after this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, said, I thirst. I thirst. I, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My, my grandson, whose English ain't all that proper right now, he go, I thirsty. Hallelujah. I thirsty. Hallelujah. But, but we'll say, I, I, we'll say I, I, I'm thirsty. Hallelujah. But I thirsty. Somebody say, I thirst. Hallelujah. Now, we all know what it means to be thirsty. A lot of us, you know, uh, but in Jesus' case right here, his hands was bound and his feet were bound. And it was hot out there. And I'm sure sweaty and sticky from being beaten all night long. Haven't been given anything to drink, but endured every ounce of what was given to him. But still was enduring what was due to him on the cross. He was now feeling thirsty. He was now feeling thirsty, but a lot of people didn't understand what, what he needed. What they wanted to give him was what he didn't want. He refused to drink something that didn't represent what he needed. Because what he needed was for the people to understand that what I'm up here for, 
I don't need anything to numb my pain. I don't need anything to alter my perception. I don't need anything to alter what my goal is. I don't need anything. I don't need nobody help while I'm up on this cross. Hallelujah. But when I think about a Pastor Owens, I think about this right here, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to read some in just a moment. When I think about this right here is that, that it was good that the disciples weren't there because they would have gave him what he needed. Because if they would have gave him what he needed, he had to feel the, the feeling of abandonment. He, he had to feel the feeling of, I have a need. I have a need. Anybody ever felt they had a need for something that was easily should have been given to them? You know, I, I remember a time, even as a little boy, I wonder, I say, I, I go to mom, I say, mom, uh, uh, give me a dollar. And she'll say she don't got it, but I just seen her with a lot of money in her hand. Hallelujah. And, and a dollar, we say a dollar, don't, a dollar is not a lot. But to a kid, it means a whole lot. Hallelujah. But I'm glad that my mother didn't give me what I asked for because that taught me something that I don't need to get everything I asked for I got to be humble in the process I got to be humble in the process and endure what was coming to me he said that I thirst early in the gospel a drink of wine and marrow was prepared for Jesus it was customary in those days to give an authentic drink for those about to be crucified but we got to understand here this drink was prepared to numb his pain. I don't need nothing to numb my pain, so I have to spit out what you guys are trying to give me. You guys are trying to stop the process. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, to appear, to appease the soldier, Jesus took a sip, but not enough to deaden the pain. In this passage, he prompted the guards for his final drink. This one consisting of vinegar and water. Among his seven last words, this is the only verbal expression of his physical suffering. Even though he was scourged, crowned in thorns, walked the way of the cross and was nailed to the cross. However, Jesus thirst on the cross was more than a physical thirst. It was a thirst for souls in whom love compelled him to redeem. He wasn't thirsty for something to drink. I thirst for souls. All ye that laden, heavy laden, come unto me and I will give thee rest. Woo! Hallelujah. It ain't the kind of thirst you think I'm thirsty for. I'm thirsty for souls. I'm thirsty to give you salvation. I'm thirsty. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give God praise. Uh, somebody shout, I thirst. But it's not what you think I'm thirsty for. I thirst. Mm. Ooh. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. After he walked, that walked. Was beaten and didn't say many words. Walked down those rough roads and carrying this cross, but didn't say many words, didn't say nothing at all. Didn't whine when he was walking, carrying the cross. Didn't whine when they was beating him all night long. Didn't whine when they were lying on him and talking about him. Uh, didn't whine when his disciples didn't show up for his execution. Uh, didn't whine, hallelujah, didn't say a word uh, to 
to describe his pain in anguish. Then say nothing, hallelujah, in any kind of manner to let people know that I feel angry up here. He was glad to be on the cross. He was glad to carry the cross. He was glad, hallelujah, that thorns were put on his head. So I can sing today. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad that he set me free. Let the redeem of the Lord stand on their feet and give a shout and say, I thirst. I, I, I thirst. Hallelujah. Not the kind of thirst that you think I'm thirsty of, but I. I thirst that I may redeem you. I thirst that I may heal you. I thirst that you may be set free. I thirst. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Give God praise in this place. Somebody shout, I, 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 I thirst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I thirst for Jesus, the living water. Hallelujah. Awesome word, Pastor. That's powerful. That's powerful. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I want to do a little twist here. I want to go to Genesis chapter 22. It's just burning in my spirit. And if we all, I'm going to tie all this in together with the seven last words. In Genesis chapter 22, verse 3, if you got a Bible, turn there. If not, I'm going to read it. It says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clayed the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place which God had told him. Verse 4, then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Verse 5, and Abraham said unto the young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Verse 6, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they both went of them together. Verse 7, Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and he said, My father. And he says, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Verse 8, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And as I was thinking about this last, the last two words of Jesus, it birthed in my spirit the story of Abraham. And you find out that this passage of scripture is referenced to the cross. Because Abraham got a word from God that you, I want to sacrifice. You say you love me, and because you love me, I want some proof. Amen? We say we love God today, and God says, I want some proof. Right? We say we love God. God says, I want your loyalty. We say we love God. God says, are you thirsty for me? We say we love God. Are you willing to forgive men when they trespass against you? We say we love God. But do you, do you have someone that's dearly beloved to you? 
Jesus had John, his confidant, who stood with him at the cross. And when, when the scripture said Abraham saw the place afar off where he was going to produce this sacrifice before God, Jesus saw the place afar off. In the process of carrying the cross, he knew that the hill of God, Gotha, was the designated place for me to give my life as a sacrifice. Oh, glory to God. Preach myself happy today. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He, in the first way he says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. See, we have to get to the place in ourselves where we get a revelation. When people mistreat us, I still can have an attitude of gratitude. I still can devote myself to the love of God by forgiving folks of the trespass against me. Then he goes on, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, sometimes we feel like when we're in a storm and in, in troubles of life, we feel like God turned his back on us. Jesus was in a place of hanging on a cross next to two thieves. One was gratitude and one was ungrateful. And as he hung in the middle, the one said, my Lord, remember me when you're into to your kingdom. And that's why Jesus said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. I come to tell you today that when you got a revelation of the love of God and your relationship is right with God, you know I will spend eternity in paradise with my Savior. Glory to God. But before we get to the, to the resurrection, he says, I'm thirsty. And pastor just talked about it. Are you thirsty for Jesus today? Are you thirsty for the well that never runs dry? Uh, just like the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman, came looking to draw some water. And Jesus said, give me a drink. He looked and said, he, she, she said, you don't have nothing to draw with. He said, but you knew who it was that's talking to you. You would, He would give thee everlasting water, everlasting water, a water that you never thirst again, a bread you never hunger after for again. He said, because I am the living water. Glory to God. Which brings it to number six. After Jesus had knew that the work of redemption had been completed, the spirit of reconciliation has been fulfilled because now it's a time to take a heathenistical world a sinful people to restore them back in connection with the father and the father has reconciled you he did not look at your sin and your lawless deeds he looked beyond my faults and he saw my need I come to change the day when Jesus hung on that cross, he said, it is finished because I did what you told me to do. I came to your dad and said, daddy, prepare me a body. <laughs> then I can go down and redeem mankind for you, God, back to yourself. And because at this point of the cross, he said, I've done what I was called to do. I've done what I was appointed to do. I suffer many afflictions and persecutions. I've been beaten. I've been ridiculed. I've been mocked. I even got a crown of thorns on my head. But I come to tell you today. He said it is finished. Just because I may be going through a storm in my life. I come to tell you today. There's a Savior who's on your side. There's a Savior who suffered worse things than you can suffer. And he's right here with you today. But then it comes to the finality. As he hung on that cross, he said, Father, it is finished. And then the word says in Luke 23, 46, he said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. Now it's time to die. Now it's time to give up the ghost. Now it's time to release my 
myself back into your hands that you will be glorified. See the cross is a representation of the glory of God being fulfilled. And when he hung on that cross and he said it's done, he said, Father, now I'm back in the place of restoration. I'm back in the place of where my spirit connects with you again. But the Bible tells us they took him down off the cross and they laid him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed in the grave three days and three nights. But all but all him, woo! Early Sunday morning, the Bible says that he went down to the bowels of hell. He took the keys from the enemy of death and life. So, oh, grave, where's your sting? Oh, death, where's your victory? He said, I got the power. Glory to God. I got the power in my hands. And you know what? He gave you the keys. When he took the keys from the enemy, said, now I give you the keys to the kingdom. That whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Because I have all power in my hands. All authority been restored back to me. But you know what? Behold, I give you power to tread on scorpions and serpents and over all the powers of the enemy that nothing will be able to hurt you because now you're connected to me and I'm connected to you. I got a relationship with you. And I put my spirit in you on the third day. When he got up on that grave, on the third day, there was a rumbling in the tomb. On the third day, the Savior began to rise up. On the third day, the angel rolled the stone away. On the third day, I Savior the road. He took off the grave clothes put on immortality I come to tell you today that one of these old days we gonna exchange our garments we gonna take off the flesh that garments we gonna put on our glorified garments he said so as he was so shall we be because you're gonna look like him you're gonna talk like him you're gonna walk like him you're gonna live like him because the same life I gave, I gave it unto you that you would not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you today, but I'm happy. Won't you stand? My soul is happy because I know my Redeemer lives. My soul is excited cause he died on that cross for a sinner like me the songwriter wrote amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like you and me I once was lost but now I'm found I was blinded but now I can see when I look in the mirror of the word, I see my Savior glorified and lifted up. He reigns forever. He's seated on the right hand of God in a place of majesty. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just want to encourage you today with that word. Know that you have power. You have authority that's been given into your hands through our Savior Jesus Christ. You need to use that authority. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And I come and tell you when you get a revelation of the cross, it gives you a sound mind. When confusion tries to come in, it gives you a sound mind that... He still abides. 
because of the price that he paid on that cross. You might be here today, even though those watching on Facebook, and you might have backslid, or you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the one we talking about who shed his blood when they pierced him in the side, put a crown of thorns on his head so the blood came streaming down for our redemption. At the last supper, he saw with his disciples, said, my body is being broken for you. He said, do this and remember me and my, but he said, the cup represents my blood for the new covenant, that restoration, that redemption, that new life. Then all you have to do is believe that Jesus died, buried, and rose again. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe in him should not perish, but shit or have everlasting life. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God did a supernatural work by raising Jesus from the dead. You can be saved. You can be born again. You can be restored. You can be revived. You might feel spiritually dead today, but I come to tell you of the Savior who came to give you life and that life more abundantly. So I want you all, all over the room to pray with me a simple prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins. Knowing and unknowingly, I thank you for giving me another chance. Now come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me, reviving me, refreshing me, replenishing virtue, and empower me to live a fruitful and a free life in Jesus Christ, my Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Oh, let's give the Lord another hand praise praise him praise him praise him praise him praise him hallelujah God is so good and there we have it it is finished it is finished between now and early somebody said early Sunday morning he's going to be getting up again and we're going to be celebrating resurrection Sunday on another level hallelujah I want you I want I want you all to be encouraged hearing these words and and hearing uh, I speak on these words and and I pray that each word has impacted your life, impacted your heart, impacted your mind, and caused a shifting in your life to know that he spoke the words so that you can live, so that you can face tomorrow. He spoke the words so that you can be free. He spoke the words, hallelujah. God said, I've given you access. The only thing you can do to stop that access is denying him. It ain't God that's going to deny you. It's you yourself that would deny yourself access to get into heaven. He said, I've already paid the price. Now it's up to you to enter. Amen. Listen, Pastor Charles. Amen. Um, uh, I want to say thank you all for coming out and being a part of this wonderful 
service this afternoon. I'm thinking about in future, if in the future, doing just services, either noonday services or, or afternoon services on Friday. It's one of my goals this year to start that. If not, I don't want to start doing it every week. I just want to start doing it like at least once a month. Uh, and that's to give all of us leaders the opportunity to sharpen ourselves up and bring a word of your choice, your choosing. And my, my, biggest, my, my biggest thing is for all of us is that 